Hi everyone, today we are going to be having a go at this very large fish from Lost Ocean. I won't be colouring the whole fish but I'm going to give you some ideas and get you started and sort of talk you through um, what I'm going to do with, with it all so you can, um, you will be able to do it all and know, know what I'm going to do. It's just quite a big um, picture. Um, that one over there I did quite a long time ago, but I think people wanted me to have a go at this one as well. This is um, Castle Arts Cobalt Turquoise, and it's what I'm going to be using for the background. So I'm just going to start putting a light layer of that all over the background of the fish. And this is going to take me some time, but uh, I was going to do it before I switched on the camera, but I thought I would just do it and show you and talk you through a little bit while I did it. Now the whole fish is probably going to be shades of blue apart from this little pocket watch that I'm just colouring around now. So if you go over the lines it's not going to really matter. There'll be darker shades of blue for the rest. This is the lightest blue there is in the um, Castle Art set. So uh, so if you go over the lines it's not going to matter too much you can always erase it but if it's just a little bit it'll just blend in with the um with the rest of the blues so i'm sure it'll be fine now of course doing a fish blue means that if you want to do a background then you need to think about maybe not doing blue because your sea might be blue and then it, the fish might just get lost um, there are ways around that. You can obviously do a different shade. You can do a greeny blue or you can um, do a border like this fish has got a line all the way around the edge of it. So if you colour that in a bit darker, then the fish will stand out anyway. Um, now the fish on the facing page, he's got quite a lot of metallic um, lines on him and I might do the similar thing on this one just because fish can be shiny and uh, so that's quite fun, you know, scales are often shiny, so uh, we can replicate that in this, uh, in this picture. Um, this is quite an interesting one actually in Lost Ocean because it's quite big. And most of the um, pictures in Lost Ocean have lots of little details. So uh, for anyone who loves big areas, this is an ideal one to do. Um, is you have got and you've got background which you can draw in if you want to or get your pastels out and do some just the blue splodges or something i was thinking about doing a background but i'm not going to do one today this will be too long um if i do a background as well so uh it'll just be the basics if i'm you know not even the whole fish so but i do want to get this whole body bit done if I can. So I hope you're all keeping well. I know you'll do a newsletter this week and I haven't done one. Um, I have been concentrating on other things really, on getting some videos made instead. I think that's preferable to a newsletter. I didn't really have lots of brand new news. I had put a few um, a few things about um, Johanna Basford's new book um, on my website actually, in my blog. I was thinking about putting them in a newsletter, but I'll pop them in a blog post instead. So basically, I'll share with you now, in case you haven't looked at my website. Um, links to my website and all my socials are on the description of the video, if you want to go and check them out. But um, basically, the um, blog was about Johanna's new book. Her new book is called Rooms of Wonder. And they're all, all the pictures she's shared so far, she's been sharing a few pictures from the book, are lots of little details so rather like the wonder room in ivy getting a bit messy here aren't i um so you've got i think so far I'm trying to remember what she shared she shared an origami room so it's full of little folded bits of paper everywhere and tables and notice boards and things like that and um she shared a there was a mermaid room so sort of under the sea type room with a seashell lampshade and things like that and I'm pretty sure there was one with lots of plants, but I may have imagined that. It was a sort of library with plants in, I think. I mean, obviously it's Johanna, there's going to be lots of plants, <laughs> so uh, that's fine. But each of them had lots of little details, and it sort of reminded me, partly as I say, of the Wonder Room, but also of this book, which has got lots and lots of detailed pages. But anyway, I was, uh, I was saying to 
she um, released a um, Facebook Live. She did a Facebook. Unfortunately, I missed it, but I caught up with it and um, was talking about the new book and, and things like that, but also talking and saying it's coming out in October. Um, but saying if you want to finish her other two books before then, um, the, her latest two, so not this one, um, her latest two are, um, oh gosh, Worlds of Wonder, Worlds of Wonder, and um, 30 Days of Creativity. And she was saying you can finish those up before October, you've got plenty of time. I mean, obviously, it very much depends on how much time you have to colour and how many books you have. I know lots of people have got hundreds of colouring books and they like to spread their self amongst all of them. But anyway, in my um, blog post, I said, um, don't forget that I have got tutorials from all of those. Not only have I finished both books, I've done tutorials through them on various pages and um, there are flip throughs of my completed books. So if you want to try and finish your book before Johanna's new one comes out then have a look at my um, flip throughs if you need a bit of inspiration because obviously um, I'm very very happy for you to have a look at how I've coloured a page. Um, copy it entirely if you want, um, take a few colour ideas or I'm thinking, oh no, I'm not going to colour it like that and do something completely different. But do have a little look because uh, I don't share my work um, and then expect it to be not um, copied. You know, I'm quite happy for that to happen. Obviously, we're already colouring in somebody else's um, drawing, so there's no, no sort of exclusivity about it all. So uh, copy away. I do like it when people uh, do tag me in Instagram if they post their work. Um, so I can see it, but uh, that's always nice just to see that someone's um, followed a video or, or been inspired or something. It's always really nice, just so I can have a little look, and uh, it's fun. But uh, yeah, that's okay. And some people message me and uh, and show me bits and pieces they've done too, if they're a bit too shy to uh, post publicly on uh, social media, or or they don't have social media, you know. Um, I know some people don't, some people have, or they only have limited, that's why I'm on so many, I'm on Facebook now, I haven't been on for long but I have a Facebook page, I'm on Instagram and um, I am also um, post things on Reddit and Pinterest is a good one because I know that with Facebook um, you have to, you can't always see everything without having an account, I think, or Instagram, one or the other of them, I'm not sure. So um, you can't just look me up and find find my thing, pictures, I don't think. Um, and some people just can't get access to those pages or they just don't want to use them, which is absolutely fine. But Pinterest, you can go on and look things up, you don't have to have an account. So I'm Rachel Henderson Colouring on most platforms, except YouTube, where I'm just Rachel Henderson. I haven't, I had considered um, changing it so they're all the same, but I decided that um, all the search engines have picked me up as this and everyone who already sort of knows of my channel knows that, so I thought it might just confuse everything, so I'll leave it. But anyway, um, um, so if you just look at Rachel Henson Colouring, you can find um, find me on all these places. I haven't yet um, done TikTok, I'm not um, cool enough for TikTok, I don't think. And I'm too old. And then my sister does TikTok. I might ask her about it. And um, so I do Reddit, which apparently, excuse me, I've got to wipe my nose. My children say I'm too old to do. But hey, um, I, uh, I'm not that old. I can never remember how old I am. 48, I think I am. I'm not 50 yet. I don't feel old. But uh, anyway. <laughs> Of course, my children are always going to think I'm old because I'm always going to be older than them. They are. They are kind. They're not. They're not that nasty to me about my age. But uh, we just have a laugh about it. But anyway. Um, so yeah, I'm. So I'm on Reddit, Pinterest, Facebook, Instagram, and obviously YouTube. So those places. And uh, I'm a member of a few different colouring groups on Facebook as well. I've just joined a new one, um, just to see. Because um, the two that I was in before are only Johanna Basford exclusive. And so, um, 
because I don't just do Johanna Basford anymore. I thought I wanted one that I might be able to put other things in. But we'll see. It takes up a lot of time, I find, being a member of the colouring group. And if I see something I like, which is everything, I want to like it. I want to comment on it and encourage people, so it just takes time. So uh, I, I might go over some of these circles a little bit. It doesn't really matter. So, um, yeah, so I'm not sure yet. I might just uh, not do too much in there. We'll see. I'm going to colour over these. They're so, so close together. Okay, I've done that quite messily and quite quickly, but it's done. I'm going to show you how I'm going to give a little bit of shape to the fish. So I'm going to use the next darkest blue, which is the... Oh, I don't know if you can see that so far away. Cerulean blue light. And on the edges, I'm going to just put a layer of this. Like this. And then fade it up. So regardless of what's going on in the fish with regards to these sort of swirly bits, it's going to be the same all the way around. Oh, I think my lights are flashing in here again. The, um, I don't know whether there's something wrong with my lights. Or whether it's um, electric problems or what's going on but the main lights flash my lamp doesn't so I hope that it's not really being picked up in the video but uh, it's not ideal there's roadworks outside you might be able to hear the drone and the digging and everything digging the road up they're putting in some new broadband apparently it's going to be a lot faster but my husband reckons we're going to have to have the road dug up outside our house to have the cable put through if we want it and then we're going to have to pay for that or something. So I don't know whether we'll bother. Wow, these lights are really flashing. Um, this is quite hard to do at this angle. But I shall persevere. I want to do it like that, but actually if I... You might be able to see. Yeah, if I hold my pencil far away, I'm not shading it too badly. So hard a bit there and just fade it up. And if you do this all the way around the edge of the fish, it just gives it a bit of shape, hopefully. And it just looks a bit more, a bit prettier, I think. So a little bit around this area here. Again, I'm going to go over the top of those. Do them in a minute. Yeah, there's a lot of noise outside, diggers and things. So they have to dig up the road and then lay their new cable. And then it's causing chaos. I was out there earlier and uh, the lights changed. And because it's such a long wait, because there's temporary traffic lights, the person in the front of the queue was asleep. Well, I don't know what they were doing. I didn't see them. They might have been on their phone. Let's hope not, because that is illegal in the UK. But anyway, they didn't notice the lights change. And the car behind them beeped. And they then moved. And as they moved, the light went red. So uh, they went through, and two cars followed them, so they skipped the lights. And uh, so it wasn't good. I was waiting at the pedestrian. No, I was walking towards the pedestrian crossing. So I then pressed the button to stop the traffic so I could cross. So that caused even more chaos. But I would thought, well, I might try and cross without doing that and just skip across. But there was no chance. There's a crossroad there. It's too busy. So I had to press the button. So you can see there's an outline. I quite like it. I think it works quite well but with this darker pencil this cerulean blue light i am going to do these sections in the top fin and i'm pressing a little bit harder as you can see around the edge and then i'm going to try and make it a little bit lighter towards the middle like that i don't know how well that's being picked up and i'm going to do that on every one of those sections. I'm not going to show you too many. And here on this bottom one, sorry you can't see very well, I'm going to do it darker nearer the fish and then fade it towards the edge of the fin. I feel like I'm going to sneeze. I hope I'm not. 
like that and I will do those two the same okay and then we have a section at the bottom of the tail I will do it the same as that section there and we have a stripey bit going on in the tail and I'm just going to do quite a hard pressure every other one like that all the way through so oh, I've gone across over the line there this one's going to be darker so hopefully it won't matter too much and I'm also going to use this color for these sections here again I'm not I'm going to do it darker here and lighter as we go out from the fish yeah and here I'm going to do the middle part I don't know if you can see very clearly but there's a sort of semicircular shape with a petal part in the middle and those petal parts I'm going to do in this colour. What I'm going to do is actually pause the video and do those bits. Now I think it'll be easier to move on and show you once they're done. So I'm going to do that. So uh, I'm just going to pause and colour those in. Hi, as you can see um, the fish is now beginning to come together. Not only have I completed the bits here and here and here and here but I've done some of the bits whoops I just scribbled on him great <laughs> on the main part of the fish as well so these pieces here where there is a section I've colored that in in the same way as here so with the darker outside and the lighter middle and then where we have a little piece here I've done it darker at the tip um, at the bottom and lighter towards the end so I've colored in quite a few areas on the main fish as well and those, that was all done with the cerulean blue light. I am now going to grab my last pencil and it's called sky blue. I'm just going to give it a sharpen and we're going to just finish off a few bits and we are then going to switch to a pen. So with this darker one, as I say, it's called the sky blue. I'm going to do this bit and here I'm just going to go darker here and a lighter towards there. And the same here so basically they're all the same so lighter here and light um sorry darker here more layers and then fading down so uh, there aren't many areas with this darker blue I'm going to switch I'm hoping I've got the pen that I was going to use for the rest I'm going to use a metallic I was going to I'm hoping to use a metallic Posca pen um, where was I going now? Oh yes, over here, um, by the eye, we've got some more of these little curved bits. Um, but I don't know if I've still got it or if it's run out. So uh, I shall be checking in a moment. We do have to do the eye, actually. I was jumping the gun a bit when I said uh, finishing, because we've got to do the eye. I'm going to do these bits in the same way as I did it with the other colour. So a little bit darker at the top unless as you go towards the bottom it's not very noticeable because it's such a small area and actually it's quite difficult to do it you could just block it in if it's easier for you it's i don't think it's going to be noticeably different to be honest i just like doing it it's good practice as well um, for uh, changing your pencil pressure but not leaving white paper it's not the easiest of, uh, of things to do. As I say, it all comes with practice. As like everything, really. Now, I um, people say to me, you colour so quickly. How do you colour so fast? Well, I colour every day and I have probably, I say, I can't be 100% sure, coloured almost every day since 2013. That's quite a long time. So my hand muscles are very strong with regards to colouring, so that helps me be faster and uh, also um, I grow in confidence all the time and I think colouring every day keeps your focus, keeps your energy up, keeps, you know, you sort of, keeps you practised as well. But I realise that not everyone can do that and as I say, I haven't been able, certain days, I haven't, like Christmas Day, I don't think I coloured at all. I might have done, I think I 
dislike going a day without colouring so I think I might have just put a few lines on something or a tiny area just to say I'd done it but I was so busy and um, because I went out which was lovely and uh, so I just didn't get the opportunity to do it so you know there are the odd days but really most days so because I make videos then there's often colouring for that but in the evening I tend to colour the most so when I've um, finished cooking the evening meal we've had tea um, that's when I colour I sometimes watch a bit of TV I tend to put it on my computer so I can sit at my desk and still colour which is good I mean we've all got different setups for how we I'm just looking around on my page while I'm talking to see what we need to do I think that's it with that one um, I am looking at these dots though Quite keen actually I'm gonna do these dots um, I may change my mind but I think I want to do these dots um, anyway so I sit down at the end of the day in color um, but at, half, at um, what time quarter to eight in the evening my boys go up for their shower I've got into the habit of going up with them just because one of my sons um, is supposed to be supervised in the shower um, because he had a seizure quite a while ago. He's absolutely fine. He hasn't been diagnosed with epilepsy. He had a couple. Um, it was felt they were stress related by the specialist and he's fine. He's not on medication or anything, but we have been warned to just keep an eye on him in the shower because obviously it's quite a dangerous place to have one. Um, so I was in the habit of going upstairs with him. Now his brother's up there as well, but his brother didn't like being left alone with him because he got a bit scared, and I'm not surprised. So he doesn't need that supervision now because he's it's been a long time. But um, but I just in the habit of going up, and uh, I'm going to have a look for my pen while I'm talking. Um, so I go up and then I don't colour upstairs anymore. I used to a little bit while they were in the shower. No, it has run out. So, hmm, alternative plan. I have a blue de um, Stedler pen, which maybe I'll use this. It's quite dark, I think. It's quite thick as well, the nib. So that's going to be interesting. What I quite fancy doing is doing these bits on the inside of the fish in a different shade to the bits on the outside. I'm not going to be able to do that with that one pen. I maybe I'll use these. Yeah. these ones here I've got lots of shades of blue in here I've got this one looks like it's going to be quite dark doesn't it and then I've got this one and this one I know one of them's quite bluey I mean greeny sorry and that one I'm going to scribble them on a piece of paper um, well, I've got a rough pad here it here look. and so here's the dark one I think that's going to be a bit too dark maybe it looks a bit too dark to me but we'll see because if the others aren't the right shade and that one looks a bit lighter still quite dark um, if I put the paper down you can see it, it catches the light obviously which is the point of it that one is a nice color and I think it will work quite well with the blues we've been using I have a feeling this one might be a bit too greeny. Hmm. Um, I think it might be okay. No, there's another one actually. So this is where if you swatch your pencils in advance, your pens, you don't have to do this. But, uh, oh, that one's really a bit too greeny. It's quite hard to, for you to see. So I am going to use, oops, put that one away in the box which wants to slide all over the place, there we go. So I'm going to use this one, I think this one, no, that one. Now see I've forgotten what I was swatching, yeah those two. Okay, let's put those to the side before I forget my brain. So the slightly darker one I'm going to use on the fins and maybe the outside and then the lighter one in the middle. I'm going to do a little bit to show you. 
doing it far away I make a mess because I can't see what I'm doing but I hope that you get the idea now if you don't have a metallic pen you could use a glitter pen you could use a felt pen just a normal marker in a darker color just so it looks a little bit different or you could use um, um, a dark colored pencil so whatever you want a fine liner would work anything really so there's that that's what I'm going to do with that so it's really straightforward so I'm going to do that bit around the outside the tail this fin and this fin okay but I'm not going to go too low on the page because I need to do the eye as I end up smudging. Let me put that somewhere where I remember. And this lighter one I'm going to use on all the swirls inside. Anything that I don't colour now will be done in this pen. Okay. Oh, excuse me sniffing, but we do need to do this eye. And I'm thinking, I've been thinking about what colour to do it. And now I've got an idea. So an idea. <laughs> I am so funny. I can hear you all laughing. Right, so the centre part of the eye is going to be black and we've got a little dot drawn on it so I'm going to try and leave that free of pencil. I say try because you know what I'm like with going out of the lines. If you don't manage to um, achieve that you can use a white pen to draw in that little bit. I think I have managed to avoid colouring it in. Now if you want a really intense black on the eye it can sometimes be better to use a gel pen or um or a or a fine liner or any sort of pen because it gives a more intense colour. That's up to you. Now for the actual um, iris I'm gonna use a grey. I'm gonna use this cool grey deep and I do gonna do similar to what I did on this eye over here and I'll talk you through it because you may not watch that video. So what I do is I do a dark layer here and here. Okay, so press quite hard. I'm going to fade it towards the top. And I want to leave some white like that. And then the same at the bottom. And then hopefully that will give the impression it's a little bit shiny, the eye. I don't know if that really comes out on the camera. But that is the impression. I think I've probably left a bit too much white. Just going a little bit more at the top. There we go. So that's the eye. Quite straightforward. Um, and what else have we got to do? I think we're done with all the bits and bobs. So I am going to... Now, we do have a situation here where the thin lines overlap the thick lines. So I think what I am going to do is use the darker pen that I've used for the fins for the thin lines and the lighter pen for the thick lines and then they'll be slightly different colours. Um, and I think that's it. So for the thin outside line it will be this darker one but for the thin lines inside it would also be the darker one and then for the thick lines it'll be the lighter one. We've got the pocket watch to do. We're going to use the grey to make a silvery look tricky on such a small item but we will do our best so this is the um, cool grey deep and firstly I'm just going to do these little circular pieces you could use a silver um, metallic pen for this it might be better I might go over it in that because you want it to look shiny it's quite difficult to make it shiny when it's such a small area but what I've done with this bit is I've only coloured the side so these bits are left white and here I'm going to leave the centre white and it will help to look like shine now this watch can do the same as the eye so darker here and lighter as we go round towards the top to leave a shine line the centre we might do similarly so what might happen is there might be uh, sort of triangle here of dark and some lighter areas near where the um, light is on the rest it's quite small for you there but um, hopefully you can get the grips with that now I'm going to go away do all the um, pen because reaching over here is quite stretched for me so it's going to be messy I mean messy anyway because I'm messy as you know 
So, <laughs> but I'm going to go away and try and do some neat pen if I can and uh, take a photograph for you because that will be the last of it. So I'm going to go and uh, say thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're going to have a go and uh, do a blue fish. And uh, it'd be lovely if you do and have a go and pop it on Instagram or um, somewhere and tag me so I can see it. That would be absolutely lovely. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely, lovely day and happy colouring.